The temples at Angkor Wat in Cambodia make up the largest Hindu temple complex in the world. Visitor numbers have exploded in recent years as Cambodia has become politically more stable, but there are concerns that too many tourists could end up causing a heavy toll on the historic site. Angkor Wat is famed for serene beauty, but beneath its stone lies a secret, sealed for nine centuries. Modern scans uncovered, a hidden chamber below the holiest sanctuary, no treasure, but something far darker. This film follows the temple's birth as a cosmic mountain, the warnings whispered by villagers and jungle, the laser maps that revealed a buried city, and the team that finally opened the vault. What they found forces us to rethink power, faith, and the price of perfection. The birth of a cosmic temple. 900 years ago, King Suryavarman II of the Khmer Empire set out to build not just a sanctuary, but a vision of heaven on earth. He ordered a monument in the Cambodian jungle that would outshine rivals and endure forever, a stone map of the universe. The world came to know it as Angkor Wat. From afar, its towers bloom like lotus buds. Up close, every carving follows a strict pattern that still amazes engineers. Angkor, what was not meant to be a simple prayer hall? It was a model of Mount Meru, the cosmic mountain at the center of existence. The five towers stood for its peaks. Terraces rose like the layers of the cosmos, the realm of humans, the world of spirits, the domain of the gods, so that each step upward felt like a step toward paradise. Around it lay a vast moat, not a natural lake, but hand-dug water that glittered like mirrors. The moat symbolized the cosmic ocean, dividing mortals from deities, yet it also served hard science. It cooled the complex, absorbed floods, and stabilized foundations through storms and centuries. Khmer engineers hid advanced solutions inside beauty. The walls turned into stories, sandstone galleries, Hundreds of feet long showed dancers, goddesses, battles, and the king among the gods. It was prayer and propaganda. At once, a message that the ruler did not merely receive divine favor, he embodied the bridge between heaven and earth. To question him was to question the order of the universe. The construction was audacious. Sandstone blocks came from quarries. Over 50 kilometers away, moved without steel cranes or machines. Joints were so precise, a sheet of paper could not slip between them. The stones, heavy as cars, stand without cement, held by balance and exact geometry. After centuries of heat and rain, the structure still holds. Every step and wall became a lasting prayer, a belief that human devotion and perfect order could reach the gods. Perfection, however, can hide flaws. Beneath the ornate carvings and quiet water, small signs hinted at something concealed. Locals spoke of places where the ground rang hollow. Lanterns dimmed when no wind blew, no one dug. They said a temple that looked like heaven also guarded something from hell. The whispers grew waiting for those determined to uncover what the gods had kept hidden. The jungles whispered. For nearby villagers, Angkor Wat was never a tourist site. It felt alive. The moats breathed when wind skimmed them. Thunder rolling over the towers sounded like gods stirring. When rice field paths thudded, hollow beneath their feet, people turned away. Elders warned about restless patches of ground where even birds refused to perch. Monks urged the faithful to avoid certain walls at night where the air felt heavy, as if something waited below. These were not mere ghost tales, they said, but hard-won advice, do not wake what sleeps under stone. In 1860, a stranger ignored the silence. Henri Muho, a French naturalist, entered the Cambodian bush seeking plants insects, and artifacts for European museums. 
the jungle fought him with heat like steam and leeches that climbed his legs. Soaked ground swallowed his boots. Then geometry appeared where wild growth should reign. Straight lines, sharp edges, spires rising among trees. He cut vines and a stone, city unfolded. Faces of gods cracked by roots. Serpents coiled on shadowed stairs. Mao Hot stood stunned. Later he wrote that the site surpassed Europe's greatest cathedrals. Wonder soon turned to unease. Some corridors ended abruptly at smooth, later sealed walls. Others were filled with mortar, as if someone had locked the passages from inside. He noted rooms that end in silence. His sketches carry the confusion. How could a place so vast hide itself? When his drawings reached Paris, Europe gasped at a lost Asian civilization. Newspapers called it the lost cathedral of the East. Expeditions followed, plans were drafted, restoration began. Yet not all of Mao Hot's notes were printed. Early sketches near the Western Gate, showing odd depressions disappeared. Officials blamed misplacement. Others suspected quiet censorship. Perhaps the gaps were warnings that no one heeded. In Cambodia, caution persisted. Workers who touched the wrong walls sickened for no clear reason. Lanterns died in still air. One mason swore his chisels, resisted the stone as if the temple would not open. Nagas serpents, carved guardians, circled sealed zones with eyes fixed toward the ground. The message was clear. These were not doors for passage, but barriers meant to keep something inside. Foreigners kept digging and mapping, unaware. They walked atop a secret, guarded by kings and nations for centuries. The world admired the beauty above ground. The real story remained buried below. The city beneath the jungle. Angkor Wat's fame hid the true scope of what lay around it. The complex was photographed, restored, and visited by millions, yet the jungle and centuries of silt concealed the larger design. To the naked eye, Angkor Wat looked like a solitary marvel in a sea of green. That illusion shattered when scientists traded shovels for lasers. In the early 2010s, Researchers flew LIDAR, airborne lasers that send millions of pulses through canopy and dust. Computers stripped away the jungle and rebuilt the ground beneath. Where trees had stood, roads emerged, grids replaced chaos. The forest floor was not random, it was planned. They had not mapped a temple, they had revealed a city. The digital model showed avenues, canals, reservoirs, and neighborhoods spanning hundreds of square kilometers. Angkor was the heart of a lost megacity, rivaling the great capitals of the ancient world. Water ruled its design. Canals moved monsoon rains to rice fields. Massive reservoirs stored water-like batteries. Channels cooled the city in heat. Long before electricity, the Khmer engineered a hydraulic civilization. But hidden in the data was something stranger. Beneath Angkor Wat's central sanctuary, the holiest point, appeared geometric voids aligned with the foundations. Above, clean squares, sharp lines, regular spacing. These were not random cavities. They looked planned. Some scholars offered a familiar explanation. Foundation deposits, small ritual pits, ancient builders used to bless new works. But those are shallow. The LIDAR suggested extensive hollow features directly below the sanctum. Others called them natural anomalies. Yet their symmetry argued otherwise. Debate flared. Caution urged patience. Evidence demanded action. If true, the data supported old rumors of sealed rooms under Angkor Wat. Had the builders raised their mountain toward the sky and also sunk it into the earth? The breadth of the mountain. By 2020, 
curiosity hardened into resolve. Folklore, lidar maps, and missing plans pointed to the same place. A multinational team of archaeologists, engineers, and imaging experts assembled. Their focus, the Western Causeway, the path every pilgrim takes, and the central sanctuary built for the gods. They would read the ground itself. Using ground-penetrating radar and micro-seismic sensors, they sent waves through sand and stone. Layers of color and sound came back, turning centuries of silence into data. At first, everything looked ordinary. Thick foundations, compacted sand, the signatures of ancient craftsmanship. Then, the signatures broke. Under the sanctuary, instruments detected long horizontal voids rather than solid bedrock. Stranger still, the voids were lined with stone, thicker than anything above, as if the finest engineering had been reserved for the hidden structure below. Why reinforce what no one would see? Why invest so much to keep people away? The scans traced corridors splitting like veins and converging under the central tower. Just as pressure mounted, the site pushed back. Part of the Western Bridge slumped during a survey. Equipment shorted, cables failed. One screen flickered with a faint pattern that looked like a carving of Naga coils around human figures. Local workers stepped away. Some refused to return. They had seen the same symbols on sealed temple doors. Break them, the elders said and you wake what sleeps. But the world was watching. Journalists hovered. Funders demanded results. The team widened its grid and pushed deeper. The radar lines sharpened. A single descending corridor revealed itself from the central platform. A deliberate path, not a crack. Excavation began at dawn. Roots and rubble fought every inch. At last, a small stone. Cutout appeared, tight as a throat. Cold, stale air breathed out. After nine centuries, the mountain exhaled. Discovery of the chamber. The opening was hardly wide enough for one person. Removing each blocking stone felt like pulling teeth from the hill. Sensors warned that the air held little oxygen and had not mixed with the outside since the 11th century. When the final slab shifted, the chamber answered with a slow hiss, like a last warning. A sour metallic smell rolled over the team. Lights cut through dust that seemed alive. Soot blackened the walls. Stone blistered as if scorched. Every breath stung. Notes later read, unbearable heat, uncanny quiet. The weight of history pressing on each heartbeat. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Epoch Dive for more amazing documentaries.